Welcome back here to the Ram Report with head coach Steve Fairchild. Brian Roth with you. Again, the Rams 3-1 now on the season. Get a host San Jose State coming up this weekend for homecoming. Before we get to that, well, football 101 for the international students here at Colorado State. Steve, it's a clinic put on by Colorado State. And, yeah, I know maybe football 101 probably applies to most fans out there, according to a coach. But uh, your thoughts, teaching some international students about the football. I think it's great. I think the more we can teach football, the better chance we have at fans coming to the game and uh, you know supporting us so I think it's good I, I don't know about Gary Ozello now he's uh, he's probably gonna be in my office calling plays here before too long we actually do something like this in the spring for women yeah. our staff actually puts on a football 101 clinic for women so again anytime you can uh, teach it and get people to learn more about it I think it's a good thing yep, without question let's take a closer look at football 101 how many are going to their first ever football game tomorrow Football 101 is a chance for new international students uh, to come and learn the rules of American football. The third annual Football 101 was held a day prior to CSU's big game against UNC, and Gary Ozello from the athletic department gave these international students some players to watch for on Saturdays. So a key guy to watch tomorrow is number four, Pete Thomas, our quarterback. On defense, key player to watch is another number six, Michael Sisson. Michael Sisson's a linebacker. He'll play on the right or the left side behind the defensive line. He's one of the best players at his position in the country, so pay attention to him. It was an opportunity to communicate what goes on around Ram football, the community and the school pride, uh, and having a chance to communicate that to our international students. And it's, it's something that I look forward to at the beginning of every football season to be able to come and do this. I know from the athletic perspective, it was a chance to build a new partnership with our international students, many of whom um, have never been to a football game. One of the things that really surprised me last year and in talking with some of the students that I met last year, there's a group of students from India and Nepal that know more football than I'll ever know. Football has become a huge part of the college experience in the United States and it's a game that for the most part is only played in this country, which makes it difficult for these students to understand the rules right away. Football is really very complex, so when I first came to, the, uh, came to Fort Collins, I just thought like, why, are you, why people are playing this kind of game? And I mean, I, don't, I didn't understand anything. But when I started playing football, um, it's just like one at a time. So I just learned one rule at a time. There are four quarters. They're each 15 minutes long. If the ball goes out of bounds or there's an incomplete pass, the clock stops, or if there's a penalty. And I've been to a couple games, but I'm still trying to pick up the finer points. I think I basically get how it works now, and going through that just was like a refresher for me. Um, but definitely, I think the next game I watch will be like, I'll finally get it. Once I learned everything, it was one of the best games I have ever played in my life. <laughs> Literally, they eat four or five times a day to keep their weight up. These students also learned that while most of these players look big and scary on campus, they share common ground in many ways. We have on our roster about 105 players. They are students just like you are. They go to class every day. They have to take a minimum of 12 hours every semester. One of the first things some of these students have picked up on is the idea of becoming a Monday morning quarterback. I want our coach Steve Fairchild on third down not uh, to be conservative but just like make a big play and just not run the ball in every third down so coach so you have to do something just make a big play on third down for the ram report andy morgan <laughs> well steve there you go everybody's an expert aren't they yeah just everybody's <laughs> got all the answers on third down so uh no that's great though and yeah, maybe we should open it up more who knows now this this kid's gonna fit right in with yeah. the rest of college football fans <laughs> across the nation hey uh final thought here before we let you go san jose state coming up this weekend i know they got their first win last year against or last week rather against new mexico state yeah you know they're a pretty talented team you know they had uh, ucla 17 17 in the rose bowl real late in the game so uh, they find ways to move the football. They can they can run it and they can throw it. Uh, defensively, they're fairly multiple and they seem to be stopping most people that they play. So 
uh, it's going to be a challenge for us. And really, we can't worry about them coming off a win. The, the main thing for us right now is just our own mindset and uh, just getting ourselves ready to play. That should be a fun one coming up at Sunny Lubick Field at Hughes Stadium. It's homecoming and expecting the biggest crowd of the year and could be the biggest crowd we see all season long. So if you don't have your tickets, certainly get them and get out to the contest. Thanks to head coach Steve Fairchild. We'll let him go, but we're not done yet. Coming up next, we'll talk some CSU Ram volleyball with head coach Tom Hilbert. Stay with us here on the Ram Report. Solving real world problems is a hallmark of research at Colorado State University. The Engines and Energy Conversion Lab at CSU is committed to meeting the global energy challenges of the 21st century. Developing countries use our clean burning wood stoves, giving them safe and sustainable technology, helping to reduce indoor air pollution and improving the quality of lives. Colorado State University Research, local discovery, global impact. Since 1929, the Department of Human Development and Family Studies at Colorado State University has been home to the Early Childhood Center, a dynamic learning environment for young children and university students alike. In January, the center will open its doors in the newly renovated historic Washington School. The new center will more than triple the current space, add infant care, and greatly enhance student learning and research discovery. You can be a part of this exciting project, joining other generous and visionary donors. Learn how at ecc.colostate.edu. Twitter is great. Here's one. That darn cat is in the tree again. Where's a seven-footer when I need one? Here, kitty kitty, come on. Heard you looking for a seven-footer. Wow, Coach Miles, this is crazy. I just tweeted that. Trevor, you got this? Yes, sir. Yeah, he's more of a dog guy. This ought to do the trick. Okay, thanks. That's what we're here for. Go Rams! Welcome back one final time here on the Ram Report. I'm your host, Brian Roth. And as always in this segment, we talk some CSU Ram volleyball. And as always, head coach Tom Hilbert joins us. And this time, senior Caitlin Steffen joining us in the program. Rams go 2-0 and here this past week with two conference wins. They improved to 8-3 and in the season. And they are now ranked 21st in the top 25 poll. Tom, congratulations on the wins. And a good way to bounce back after dropping that final non-conference tilt to uh, Denver. Yeah, it was a great great weekend for us, really. I, I thought that we had one bad set in the first set against Air Force. After that, we played five extremely efficient and mature uh, games of volleyball. And, and um, you know, it's good when your team gets that stuff under control. They get the feeling again of what it's like to be playing really error-free and, and tough. Yeah, Rams sweep uh, Air Force 3-0. They sweep Boise State 3-0. Caitlin, is it is it tough sometimes to play Air Force? Because I, I know you guys have such a long winning tradition over the Falcons. Do you have to kind of motivate yourself more to, to get up for a match like that? Yeah, definitely. But I think uh, losing the game against Denver and kind of going in underestimating them. Uh, did it for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. The, the match against Air Force, you guys played well, and then you came back against Boise State. Talk about that because I know Coach Hilbert told us last week on the show that, that Boise is, is a good, good volleyball team. Yeah, they are good. Um, they beat a you know tough game on. The, sorry, <laughs> they had a tough game on the road against right. Wyoming and took them to five and beat them on their home court, and that's a very hard place to place to play. And so we knew that they were going to be good. Yeah. Tom, she wasn't good or anything, was she, against no, Boise State? It was, she was, she turned a switch because it was probably the best and cleanest I'd seen her play in a, ever in that position because she's playing a new position this year. She's playing on the left side and she's never played that full time. And she was very, very good, had no hitting errors, didn't get blocked one time, hit 667, which is like a batting average. And, and, uh, that's a, a personal high for her. She also blocked well and served the ball extremely tough. So she did all facets of her game very well. Yeah, you, you mentioned uh, the no errors, uh, no hitting errors. As a team against Boise State, you guys were fantastic yeah. in that department, weren't we you? We were, we were 10%, which, which is below our goal is 12%. We were below our goal. Um, if you play anybody at 10%, you're gonna compete. It doesn't matter who you're playing. If you play anybody at that level, you're gonna compete. And, um, you know, we were very, very good in that area. And then I also like the fact that our team prepared well and Boise State does the same things Wichita State does and Wichita State beat us and we stepped it up and we played them from a blocking defensive standpoint better 
and uh, basically shut them down. Did you think your team perhaps was a little extra motivated because of the way the non-conference schedule ended? I think so. Uh, I think that it got their attention, and I think we did some good preparation for the week. I mean, you'd have to ask her that question, but it's, they certainly played that way. And, um, you know, I want my goal for them is to get that stuff under control, know how to play well when you need to play well, and, and that's certainly what we did this last weekend. So pretty good pep talk by coach after the DU loss, huh? <laughs> yeah. Throwing clipboards around the locker room, <laughs> yeah, that exactly. kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin, talk a little bit about uh, this weekend. You guys are going to go on the road for the first time in Mountain West play. Rams are going to be in Vegas coming up on Thursday and then a Sunday game at San Diego State. Your thoughts on the upcoming road trip? Um, it's going to be a tough one. UNLV just beat a very good San Diego State team. And um, San Diego State's always good at home. So both games will be tough. Yeah, that was always one of my favorite road trips uh, when we go in basketball, Vegas, San Diego State. Mm -hmm. Tom, you're going to get two full days of rest between those two matches. I know, but they're, they're road days. I, if that were at home, I think it would work to our advantage. On the road, I'd just as soon play. But we're, you know, we're waiting for that Sunday match because that's on CBS College Sports. It's a nationally televised live game. So I'm happy to do it, but I'd still rather play with only one day break. Yeah, that'll be a one o'clock start time on Sunday, CBS College Sports. Uh, girls get up a little bit more for TV games? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think everyone does, though. You yeah. want to perform well, uh, especially when it's live. I mean, there's, you yeah. know, you can't cut anything out. You have to be... <laughs> You know, on your game. <laughs> they, they, they also all get haircuts and, you know, yeah. they look really good. They get, they get the extra, maybe extra makeup <laughs> right. and make some changes to the uniform, yeah. put their hair in a different style, right? Yeah, the oh, bow yeah. in, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever works. If it results in a win, I don't think Coach Hilbert cares. Well, hey, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate it, Tom. As always, hey, best of luck this coming weekend. Thank you. All right, that'll wrap it up here on the Ram Report. Thanks to everybody that have joined us here on the program, and we'll see you next time right here on the Ram Report. Thanks for joining us on the Ram Report with Steve Fairchild. Join us again next time for more Ram action.